Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the ESL TV studios here in Cologne. Of course, we are finally ready to see the grand final of this entire season. Of course, this whole weekend, we've been here at the Wargaming.net League EU Season 4 Finals. Our final match is upon us. Virtus Pro going up against School Bus. The less I say about it, the better. I want to hear what our experts have to say about it. So we're going to throw, throw it straight over to you guys. Take us into this one. What a huge match we have on our hands. Totally. I can't wait to see this one as well. Our voting is down to the wire. It's literally, if we get the one of us gets the exact score, we win. As simple as that. So I can't wait to see either. What is your opinion on the upcoming match? I mean, School Bus, uh, old rival, Virtus Pro, uh, there's nothing else we can say. Yeah, these two have been battling in the finals for from the start, from the beginning. This will be an amazing match. Uh, I just hope that... The, they will be playing uh, as amazing games that we have had so far and not come too much. <laughs> well, I think that we're going to have a very cautious approach from Virtus Pro. For sure. Uh, they will do things nice and steady, but if they've learned anything from playing against Navi, they are going to assault and destroy. And I think that this is one thing that we have done a lot or seen a lot from Navi. They have gone to the finals, taken it easy, and then in the finals, they've just assaulted so much that the enemy is not prepared. Kind of like C-Play has done for um, Virtus Pro. Like, assaulted so much that Virtus Pro is taking a little bit of back. And they can actually do this sort of uh, shock and awe style tactics. And we saw a tactic like that during the season. Virtus Pro was a lot more aggressive than the in Season 3 or Season 2. So they can do it. Yeah, Carmen, what do you think about this upcoming matchup? Standard classic, El Clasico of World of Tanks that you server. Stalker is gone, but still, School Bus is in the, in the final. So something that we see all the time almost in the World of Tanks youth finals. I just think that this time, I hope it will be a closer match. And thanks to the change of the rules, we will not see the 13 rows on the Abbey. <laughs> so at least is this. Also, yep. School Bus changed a lot. Really, a lot changes during the team. And I just hope that it will bring, you know, a really closer setup. Yeah, it's. I'm a bit cautious that this is going to be... Uh, I want to say that Virtus Pro is going to steamroll or it's going to be close. Like, I got, I've got a feeling it's going to be one or the other. Is Virtus Pro is going to come out and just do 100% and just, just steamroll over School Bus. Or they're going to take it more cautious. And in that case, School Bus stands a chance. But I must say that Virtus Pro looks a lot stronger than School Bus. But we've only seen them once. And that is hard to really quantify how good they're playing at the moment. Yeah. I agree. I agree. If 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 Virtus Pro runs School Bus, it's over fast. But if they give a little bit and chances for School Bus, and the School Bus will have a chance. And if it goes to a Sandra, then it's wide open. Either team can take it. Yep, yeah, definitely. I can't disagree with that. So, this, what's your opinion? I think the coordination of Virtus Pro is better than from School Bus. The decision making from School Bus is on the same level as Virtus Pro, but the coordination, the accuracy. I think Virtus Pro has an, uh, a bit of an advantage. Here. I, I totally agree with you. Virtus Pro's edge will be that cooperation teamwork. But if somehow School Bus gets in the middle and the tactic uh, falls apart, kind of what happened on Mines when it was C Play versus Virtus Pro, that overarching uh, command structure falls apart a little bit where School Bus thrives because they're all individual players. Maybe that is an edge for School Bus. You can say that, but still, the coordination overall is better for Virtus Pro. So that can happen once. What happens against C-Play, they took them by surprise. They didn't hit the 3090 coming from behind, but I don't think that will happen twice. You think they can learn that quickly? Well, they are the number one in EU for a reason, undefeated this season. So let's go see how School Bus's <laughs> Arklet will ban out these they maps. Really he nice. needs to get the edge here, I think. No. For sure, he have an advantage in the you know in the height. Yeah, yeah. Even Venom looks to him like you know very small guy, but he's still. <laughs> yeah, quite big. actually, you gotta say that this guy. I, I've said it so many times. He is a gentle giant. But remember, the guys, when you go voting for this match, it is a best of seven, seven. not a best of five. So remember to put the correct numbers down. <laughs> no, we don't see any bounce of the map, but it's a high probability that. We don't see the maps number five, six, and seven. So, soft bands go for Ruinberg. Your predictions? Prokhorovka. Prokhorovka next. 
Step is Wilkie. Mm. If Prokhorovka is number six, then step mu Steps might be the first map. So let's see the sixth first. Notes there for Arklet. Okay, Prokhorovka, Prokhorovka is the sixth. So uh, now it might be actually Insk. And then, like, Cliff Mines, Himmelsdorf, and Steps is going into the first place. Mm. Interesting combinations. Maybe Cliff will be put in the fifth position. It does seem like many of these teams Mines. are removing it. Mines. Wow, Virtus Pro do not want to play on it. Although that was Arklet saying that. So Arklet from School Bus said they didn't want to play on Mines. That is interesting, considering Virtus Pro's only map drop was on Mines. Yeah, but still, Mines are, you know, if you don't like Mines, you will not play it. So just depends on the team. Mm -hmm. Insk is one that we expected to be uh, later in the map pool. Oh, sorry, yeah, later. But Cliff but is coming in, so Insk is going to be one of the early ones. You really want to see more Insk, don't you? It will be second time only. That yeah, exactly. Ask. And already we saw that it can be really interesting to viewer because of this, you know, this crossing of the tanks at the at the railroad. It can happen from the both teams. Either they will attack. It's third map, so it can maybe be, you know, it for sure will see it. So as oh, said. Steps is second. Himmelstorf is first. Now, okay, let's quickly talk about these two teams on Himmelstorf. What do you think is going to happen? Do you have a theory of what lineups they'll take? It's standard lineups, I guess. Either three fifty one hundred or three i three. And Virtus Pro was really strong in the grand finals on Himmelstorf, so it's, it should be an advantage for Virtus Pro. Okay. And even the Virtus Pro in the online season, the way how they destroyed Kasna in a Himmelstorf. It was impressive. So I'm going to go with Virtus Pro on the Himmelstorf too. Hmm, okay. Common. I don't know. For both of the teams, Himmelsdorf is a really strong map. And I just, you know, I would really love to see that guys from School Bus really have, you know, some courage and go with uh, the same patch like C-Play and execute it better. I have a feeling that Virtus Pro will win this. Like, outright win it. It's not going to be a draw, they're going to outright win it. There's no reason they should have ever drawn against Navi at the Grand Finals on Himmelstorf. Every single time, with a team as good as Navi trying to camp, that they managed to break the camp every single time. They just ran out of time because they attacked too late. If they fix that problem, there's no way, no way Virtus Pro can lose ever on Himmelstorf if they are that good. The only savior for School Bus is if they attack at the same time. And then it's a dance, because I don't think that Virtus Pro is going to be scared at all. I think they're going to be really confident with Himmelsdorf. I'm going with Virtus Pro for the first map. For the first map, maybe, but for second map, it's... Oh, my God. It steps. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah, it steps. So this will be a draw. Cliffs. Either of the uh, result of the... Cliff no, Ensk. Yeah, I was going to say Ensk. Yeah, Ensk. Yeah, Ensk will be the map that will be a decider for me. Because... Virtus Pro for sure will be coming there, for sure. They don't like this map. Mm -hmm. School Bus is really good on it. I think if they lost the Himmelsdorf, Steps will be camped, and Ensk will be the map that they will know, you know. Okay. So, we'll find out. Fourth map, Wilkie. So that's going to be the Cliff. No, fifth is Cliff. I don't know. <laughs> <if it's important. laughs> I remember fifth is Cliff. Cause mice? It's not mi no, Mice is last. Yeah, mine is definitely last. <laughs> Oh, oh, we've forgotten what the fourth map was. <laughs> it's too much map for us. <laughs> too many maps. But by the fourth map, we're going to have a really uh, good impression of what's going on. I really feel that Virtus Pro will get an early edge. They want to get that early win. And so I think Himmelsdorf will definitely go to Virtus Pro. In this case, Insk is the map, as you said, will be the decider. Do School Bus, are they able to crack the defense of Virtus Pro at this point? Or will, it need more, will they need more time? Okay. I think... We already know. We can talk for ages and find out, but we'll find out only when you see the players. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, it. that's the beauty of being an expert. You okay, can't be then wrong. Starting to make our predictions, what do you think the final result will be? You should start making your predictions now. Considering it's not, we're not going to analyze this match after it, we can only talk about it during it. I think we should make our predictions right now, live on, live on air, like right now. What do you think it's going to be? We're just not going to leave it as a surprise. Right now, what do you think it's going to be? 4-2. 4-2. Is my prediction. For Virtus Pro, winning Himmelsdorf, <laughs> having an advantage, letting School Bus having to attack, which is not the biggest trick from School Bus. They rather react. Mm -hmm. So then at some point they will draw. School yes. Bus will not execute a good attack. 
So they draw two times, and then the last time they have to commit everything, and Bersuo will win it. Okay, four, two. What do well, you think? Well, 4-2 was for me too, but because I want to win our bet, uh, that's why I'm going to say 4-1. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> you want to be different. But you, you do know that Sinisal cannot win. So... But the bet of today, not the whole. Oh, okay. You just want to win today and the whole thing. You greedy person. Okay, Carmen. You go with what? With Virtus Pro, yes? Yeah. You know, I just don't want him to win. <laughs> Even if I'm, you know, in the same so? in the same room, so for me it will be school bus. I really want to change it. What score? Four. I think Sand River. So five four. Oh, five four. Or uh, six five. No, how is it? Uh, it'll be five four. Uh, it'll five, be five four. four. Yeah. So I think uh, it's gonna be four two to Virtus Pro. I think I'm going with Snitzel here. Anyway, that's enough of us predicting. Let's find out exactly what's gonna happen in this finals of season four. Virtus Pro versus School Bus. Let's go to our commentators, Pansy and Laughter. Well, at least you got it right this way around, Dorsh, and I like it. You're improving for the final game, but yeah, we are indeed moments away from getting into the classic matchup that you've had the pleasure of casting near on two seasons, not necessarily back to back, but this has happened before, mm -hmm. and it's actually gone a little bit of both ways. It's not just been a one sided result, has it? Yeah, it's 50 50 at the moment. First season, of course, went to um, School Bus. They didn't mean the second season because of these issues with um, the then Team Dignitas, and now. Um, school bus and obviously third season went the way of Virtus Pro 4 to 2. So um, interesting results for sure. But it's worth mentioning, of course, that you know this is a different Virtus Pro we're talking yes. about. After season one, they made a lot of change to that lineup. You know, um, we saw that the the, um, the change of team captain, which was the biggest one, Dirt went replaced by Karitz now. So not really the same team, but still the result nonetheless. Same can be said for School Bus as well now. Exactly. I mean, of course, Stalker leaving School Bus um, and really being placed by Arklet, although there's not really any central command in that team. For me, my predicted scoreline, it has to go towards Virtus Pro because School Bus almost got beaten by TC TCM, because School Bus almost got beaten by Kazna Crew. And some would say that those two teams were better than School Bus on the day, or School Bus on the day as well. So mm. how in the hell? Will they be able to beat you know Virtus Pro? I'm going for School Bus. I don't know why. I don't. Yeah, I love uh, the yeah, underdog. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I've got a feeling that they could I do mean, something. Here. We, we all supported England in, in the World Cup, <laughs> even though we School did. Bus, my England. Virtus Pro are literally Germany right now. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll accept that. But we are into the first map. It is Himmelsdorf, as promised, the winter version. So before things heat up, it will be Virtus Pro in the south and in the north. It's going to be School Bus. This is my favourite matchup of these two. It's a classic battle. We've seen brilliant back and forth counter caps, aggressive moves. But how are these two starting? It looks like Virtus Pro are going to go off onto the hill as quickly as possible. They want to go on the left side, despite the fact where their spawns were. They just want to be able to get up there as quickly as possible, be in a decent position. Now, the fact that they've gone the long way basically says to me that they want to push around the left side of the um, Himmel, uh, the um, the castle up there mm -hmm. instead of going around the right so they want to be getting hill dominance very early on maybe even push on to near you there in the mx 5100 who hasn't got camo so that's a five percent camo bonus gone from him could make a big difference but not on him on stuff but anyway you know if they have the hill they can push off very quickly you know verts pro have breakneck he's the only guy there he's gonna try and let one off armily should have connected that shell definitely misses it so you know a little bit of a bad situation there for school bus and just calls for they're not going to get spotted that's the beauty of going up that side so you'll be able to get up there and will apple will have the sixth sense to get off that where's the other tier one for school bus there's one dedicated to the eight line i'm trying to see but anyways, i think he's coming up the zero line now to join in i was i was a little nervous apple was going to go for that first peak you get that finals jitters when every decision becomes extremely important and can cause so many mistakes, but here comes Dark God Sim to be maybe the lamb, sacrificial lamb to the slaughter, but still. Will help, will, might help Applewow out here. He's certainly one of the standout players for me this tournament. He's not had the best of ones so far, but he's still been very consistent. And we'll have to see if he can keep that up. So Vorsky just caused a hell of a lot of Virtus Pro. Retracting away from the hill, I think they might leave one up there, but no, they're all backing away. Arklet moving around as well, and we're seeing kind of three to four tanks moving around each and it just looks like school bus and verse pro are dancing around each other right now trying to find out all the information possible yeah they're just testing the water a little bit um just course testing it a little bit too much you might actually get surprised by up well but no there's no spots coming out and whoever will peek over will get punished immediately just dark old sim does get 
dispatched nicely there by just causing the MX-5100. So big blow there to Skorbas. Losing a tier one's never a good thing on Himmelsdorf where it's really important. Dead Hunter's also stuck in that position. Now Virtus Pro, they can start moving forward. You can see the cross off in towards the middle square area. The rest of Virtus Pro will have to try and support him from behind. 50 meter proxy spot is gonna come out for that MX-5100. Pavel Volso, Volsic also joining in. And this is a tactic we've never seen from Virtus Pro. They usually go aggressive at the beginning, but it could work. Let's see if it pays off. Scorbus are getting back into position now. They've gone off the hill. But that could have been disastrous if they were a little bit too slow, if they were just second guessing and stayed up on that hill. They could have been completely outplayed. We've seen something similar from Virtus Pro once in the online phase phases. I'm trying to think who it was against, but it did accumulate into a five to six line push altogether. And it was, it was kind of uh, out of the blue, but they didn't manage to connect on the cross there towards near you, so not landing that one. And I'm interested to see where now school bus take this, because they have the opportunity to make a counterplay. That was great, actually, that School Bus managed to get across. Um, as you said, there could be a possibility for a counterplay, despite the fact that Virtus Pro were in the middle. School Bus managed to get it completely unscathed over to, towards the right side. So already risky stuff from that team. Um, maybe a little bit lack of information. They might have not tried it if they knew where Virtus Pro was. Um, but at the moment, back and forth between these two, School Bus know what they have to do to counter the Russian Giants. And as does Virtus Pro know what they have to do to beat the Ukrainian School Bus. And, Really, it's a, it's, a, it's a bat of wills as well. You know, as we go further into this best of seven, it's going to become about stamina. It's going to become about experience. And to be honest, I think it's pretty even on that side. Whether, you know, Arklet has the, the kind of experience as a team captain to bring his team through is really the, the, another question. But, you know, I think he does. Bishop doing a good job there in Virtus Pro as well. Just trying to peek out, get a bit of information. He might have to sacrifice himself against Shani to get... Um, the fact that he's over there in the K1 area and, and maybe that will give Virtus Pro a way in. Oh, I like this. So they could see the weakness on the right side of the map as well because only Dead Hunter's really here. And only a tier one towards the east side of the cat push. So it may, it's it's just Virtus Pro slowly unraveling School Bus's positioning. I, I like watching this, but what sort of push time are we looking at? If there's going to be a play from either side, what sort of timing do you think they're, they're going to need for this? Well, I think Virtus Pro is not playing for time. I think they're just kind of playing for position and information. Um, the time is irrelevant for them, as, as it is for a lot of good teams. Um, they know what they have to do. They have the tactic, for instance. Um, they don't really think about, OK, so it's two minutes, whatever. Yeah, OK, they can do a last-ditch attempt, but they haven't been training for that last-ditch attempt. They've been uh, training for the good tactics, for the interesting stuff. Um, so that's what they'll be playing for 100%. And you can see Scorbus definitely want to now camp it out. Stay calm, make sure that Virtus Pro aren't going to be able to win this outright with this um, push aggressive move. But we have seen this, this um, camp being broken. I mean, indeed, Virtus Pro broke Navi in this camp in the grand final, so they could get a taste of their own medicine. Oh, they could um, do the same to School Bus, indeed, in exactly the same position. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Bishop now going to be joining around. I think he's going to be heading towards the hill with Kareets. No, he's going to turn left and go into the middle. Probably going to be used to try and proxy spot. Interesting to see how they utilize these tier ones. This used to be a huge factor in these two when they used to be head to head back in the online phases, you know, when it, it was still Virtus Pro up against uh, Team Dignitas. Tier ones were consistently used for the caps, counter caps, and making sure they get those spots out when necessary. And it's such a huge element in this one. Let's see what they can bring up here. Bishop is now making his way forward with the rest of Virtus Pro. Arklet does receive a shell, so, first real bit of damage being caused towards School Bus. Uh, only one shell, though. I can imagine that was from Breakneck. He's in the position to do so. And, well, that's already a little bit of an advantage, but only minuscule to Virtus Pro, but it, it's, it's a slow chipping effect. Let's bear in mind, most pushes begin around that two minute marker, but if you have every angle covered, if you know the escape routes are not necessarily available to the tier ones, you may not even need the full two minutes. You can make a play in this, in this map, in this sort of position quite quickly with very minimal time left. So Karit's up in the hills. See how this goes. Yeah, three minutes, 15 seconds. Crete's being careful. I mean, one nice thing, he has got Dark Gods in body just to uh, kind of stick behind. So he's got cover when he tries to peek over, but Dead Hunter's still in the better position. Um, Breakneck going backwards and forwards. And he's already connected the shell onto Arkley at the moment, and Virtus.pro really haven't moved. I guess they really want the right, the right side so they can both retreat and attack at the same time. But we've seen this tactic before. Bishop will probably go forwards. He'll try and get the 50 meter proxy spot. He won't get it because Armony's too far away. So Virtus Pro can actually come around from there. 
it's just sending bishop first, maybe even go for a cap if they want. But they're still the execution is going to have to be perfect. And Wilkie really did nail, um, really did uh, get it on the head there because um, he said, well, okay, school bus and Virtus Pro decision making probably about the same, um, equally good. But the fact that Virtus Pro has so much good fight coordination and um, uh, just agility when it comes to the fight coordination and, and the, um, the calling the shots, that they can really win those one on one situations uh, or just the team fights. So. That's really what they've got going for them. I think that's what they're going to try and exercise. I'll be interested to see if they really go for this. Generally, Himmelsdorf is a win map, so I have to see if First Pro actually do commit. It looks like they might be moving for it. You've called the strat right so far. Breakneck, Kusok, and Vorsik heading forwards. Breakneck's going to have to try and get Armelie near you. Apple are in a good position to deal with this. Breakneck's going to come up with the... Um, I think that's actually... Mm. Uh, who's that on the left? That's uh, Pavel. No, yeah, just cause in the MX-1500 on the left. He's going to go first. Breakneck's going to use Bishop as defense. First shot does come out. Second shot one as well. Yeah, Bishop is not going to be soaking up any of the damage in that tier one. Breakneck gets it focused down, but Apoan will remove Bishop from the equation. But here comes that push from Burst Pro into the cap. They move. Just cause might spring into action sh soon on the flank around the backside, but near you and Apoan being pummeled down in submission, not being able to make these counter plays. Kusok and Vorsik focusing on the fire. Breakneck and Pavel getting the action go. Yeah, a lot of damage going towards school at the moment. They're definitely losing this engagement. Look how much uh, Virtus Pro is doing to keep them out. But the cap comes off. Virtus Pro know they have the advantage in HP and they want to push it forward. Let's see if they can claim this though. Amelie is down to a one shot now. He's got to be careful. Just cause moving in from the back. But Kusok does take down Amelie. So still fighting this one. Applewell takes down Just Cause. They could still turn this one on its head. Let's keep that in mind. But Shanish very low. Just off Rio now comes in. Kusok puts him to bed. And the cap is back on now. We are seeing everything coming into play. Every single piece falling into place for Verse Pro. But now Arklet, Applewell near you have to stop this. Applewell on reload. Arklet isn't. Another is near you, but one shell to be made for near you. He's going to have to make it count. Everyone's low, but this is going to be very close. Arklet can't go around the corner because he could possibly... Uh, he can be two shot, in fact, so it's going to be really hard for him. Near you might have to suicide or do something to get rid of this. Four tanks in the cap. School boss have to stop this one. Six seconds left. Is anyone going to be able to reset? Yes, Ooh. they were. That was surely Applewell from the side coming through. Nice play from him, but now still 10 seconds on this. Bounce comes out. Breakneck goes down. Arklet turns it as well. It's back down to a 3v2. Time is of the essence, though. 10 seconds on the board. The tier one starting to come into effect. This is big play. The school bus side are down to one shots, but three seconds. This looks like it's going to be a draw on the first map, but oof, that was close draw between the two teams. But they were going in for the victory then. Virtus Pro not actually picking that up. We lied to you, but it was close. I think Virtus Pro actually made a cataclysmic error there. They should have gone aggressive. They had the HP advantage. Armley went down first, and they had the maths just to push forwards. What they did was stay in the cap. Apoel took down Breakneck. We should know Just Cause, which shouldn't have never happened. Just Cause should have lived through that one. Beautiful shooting from Apoel there, saving his team miraculously. And mm. then he could come around, then he could reset in the nick of time. But it was very close. Um, for me, Virtus Pro should have gone aggressive for sure. Um, they did it well. And maybe Kusok got outplayed a little bit because he turned his turret towards Apoel, even though he couldn't shoot him, which allowed Arklet to come around and take him out. And let's look at it this way. We go back to when these two last met. And Scorebus and Virtus Pro, <coughs> excuse me, my voice is dying. Um, you saw how Virtus Pro played against Scorebus. They showed a lot of respect for them in their game style. We saw, okay, so let's put it in perspective. It was Virtus Pro against Kazna, and that was over faster than any game we'd seen before. And Kazna had been one of the leading teams during the online phase. Virtus Pro swept them aside in about 10 minutes, and that's three maps done, dusted. See you later, guys. And then the next play day, it was them up against Scorebus. And Verse Pro played it out carefully, played it cautiously. They have a lot of respect for this team, and you can see why. They've gone back season and season, back and forth between these two, picking up that first place position. And even with the varying changes, they still have that level of respect for each other because they're so damn dangerous. Virtus Pro, yes, they are favorites. But they made a mistake then, which is rare. We don't see them often second guessing and not going for the right move. We've said it before, they are tactically extraordinarily sound. But they made a small error then. But then mm -hmm. again, we didn't see School Bus really leading much of the pace. They were consistently responsive. Yeah, they were sit sitting back. Um, once they had made that yeah. commitment towards the left side, the one to three line, the camp basically, they couldn't really do anything else. Um, they knew that Virtus Pro is extremely strong on, on Himmelsdorf. I mean, Virtus Pro has trounced them on Himmelsdorf before in the last match of this whole season on the online phase. Um, they also trounced them on Mines, they also trounced them on Cliff. So 
It's, it's a good fact that um, School Bus are still in the game. They're, they've got rid of the first map. They can kind of ease themselves in um, and take this one forwards. And to be honest, I think, you know, we're moving on to steps now. It's going to be very much the same story. Um, both these two teams are probably going to play defensive. I'm wondering if they have an interesting tactic like Seaplay had on that map with the Borsig up and towards the mountain area. Some fantastic shooting by Ruster there. Um, did a lot of damage, but I don't think in any of these two really need to do that. Um, to make it work for them. Maybe it can even get countered by a team. We'll have to wait and see for that one. But I just think this one's going to be a draw as well. And we could see Ensk being the first victory. Uh, Sand River also Maybe. an option. But, you know, I'm How wondering. How many draws will we need to get? Four. It'd be four draws. Okay. Well, four, sc four will score now. Yeah. Anyway. So, I, I don't know. I, I think Cliff is, such, is, is quite a decisive map. But then again, I, I'd... And, and Ensk, and I'd argue Himmelsdorf generally does give us a winner, but still, it is down to the teams and how they want to play this out. And if I was Velis Pro, you've got to either look at it in two ways. Either they'd want to prove a point that they can play Sand River, that the finals are just an error in judgment, or they'd just avoid it all in all. And mm. I personally would say avoid it. The way they played it out was completely wrong against Na'Vi, and it cost them arguably their game. They should have won that from their performance through the entire tournament. But... They didn't, they got stomped, <clears throat> and they made errors. So, I don't know where I sit on that that one. They, they may want to avoid that altogether, but then again, it could finally say, okay, no, actually, they did just make a small error in the last time they played this, now it's their time to fix it. But steps coming up next. We've seen <laughs> some very unique tactics coming out, brilliant tactics, even though EPS clearly don't agree, um, with the interesting usage of tanks, brilliant new positions being found and uh, exploited, let's put it that way. None of these teams are teams that really do that. They're not teams that play for necessarily cheesy strats. But is there anything we can expect that might catch us off here? I think when you're in the finals, there's really no other place than where you should really just go crazy, go ham, and try something new. Try something you, you've trained a lot, but try something new to the whole scene. There's no other better place. I mean, you obviously you can do it in the online stage. You can do you know, a few interesting things to qualify, but here is where you earn your money, you know, $100,000 yep. online, 50000 for first, 25000 for second, it's a big disparity. You, you really want to be trying something. Steps, as I said, you know, between um, the previous matchup is something you can try something on. Um, it's very open, there's not a lot of cover, but it often involves the execution, not the tactic, if you know what I mean. It, it doesn't mm. rely on the kind of thing we see on Mind and Cliff where the, the obstacles, the terrain, the topography yep. is very, very um, limiting and it's it's really what everyone's playing around where Steps is like, okay, we have to push like this and if we take down this tank first, we'll be able to win it like this and it's simple as that. Yeah, certainly something to keep in mind. As you can see, it is an open canvas. As you said, we've seen C play adjusting, bringing out something new here that we had very rarely seen before. <clears throat> But I doubt we'll see it, as you said, but there is options of creativity. We saw the 4-1-6 play from School Bus back in the day on this towards the north side, very far back, but then pushing off that and being very aggressive and catching teams out. But not really the time to be adjusting anything new in my eyes. I think they have to play this out smart and carefully. You've got to play to the rules being in your advantage. And as you can see, phenomenally talented sides, brilliant players. But anyway, in the north in red, it's going to be Virtus Pro in the south in blue. It's School Bus. And let's see where they're heading here. What sort of tank choices are we seeing coming out? Seeing a T32, T69, Triple MX3090 from Virtus Pro. So quite vanilla, quite normal actually. And from score, it's a little bit of change. I mean, four AMX3090s and uh, a T32, I believe that is. Um, a Pershing even, of course, the Pershing Arc is playing it. Um, it's going to be picked up from School Bus. So a little bit of variation, a little bit of change, but all in all, you know, what we'd expect from these two teams. We expect also a little bit of aggression because Virtus Pro have picked three MX 3090s and they often lead the pace in the game. Um, School Bus with a four also could be a little bit more aggressive. And to be honest, I do prefer those uh, four MX 3090s. I'm not sure exactly how near you is going to perform. So mm. far, he's been pretty consistent in this tournament. For such a new player, it's it's very, very good to see that someone can you know, step up into a team and actually be a good player, full stop, and, and really be calm. He's kind of fit in, fit in very well, which is which is really hard thing. Um, but Apoel Armley, we've seen this before, sitting in the zero line, waiting to make a couple of shots, a few, a few uh, blind shots coming out there from Breakneck um, in the MX-3090 and Bishop in the T-69. None, none landing so far, and really what school was expected. 
Yeah, I think Schoolbus know that, and I think Verse Pro are fairly well aware of how Schoolbus wanted to play this, and obviously the tree's being taken down, big back trip swap, but still. Oh, it could have got a, uh, a couple of reply shots there, possibly, but it looks like Verse Pro are probing for an option, a route in, Pobble quite far up. I'd be interested to see if they ever stick with this sort of player. I've never seen Verse Pro truly commit on this map. It's something they'll they'll toy with unless there is that immediate meetup in the trenches with the team who starts in the south. But it's, I, I still find it quite rare that they actually go for the full commitment if the option's not available. It's not something that I see them do, um, for example, like on Prokhorovka, where they will forge the victory. This is a map that they'll still have to get a response from the opponent to allow it to happen. But still, at the moment, very minimal damage done. No one taking any, actually, so far. So. If they wanted to find that route in, if there was an option here for Virtus Pro, how could they actually do it? What would need to be in place for them to actually get the victory here? Well, they need to get a lot of information first. Second, once they have that information, they need to have landed a couple of shells. Get a, a, a situation where, you know, if you're pushing in in World of Tanks, um, you're basically going to kind of say, OK, we're going to receive a couple of shells before we land our sh a couple of shells of our own. So if you can kind of n negate that with a, with a couple of shells in the you know, two or three minutes of, of the beginning of the battle, it's perfect because then you're going one for one when you're actually in exchange. Then it becomes about who's the better team in, in just fight coordination, who's calling the strats better, who's calling the targets better, also a very important factor, and, and who's just generally maneuvering their tank and the team as a whole. Um, but it is steps, so I don't expect too much. You can see Vorsic, Breakneck, heading around. Dark Horse Dim is in the best position to spot these two, and Vorsic might actually be able to kill him if he doesn't be careful. Breakneck is in the background. A couple of shells whizzing past him. And no connection. Yeah, he just about makes it away alive somehow there. It's kind of his teeth kind of play, but he might just be connected on if he's not careful. He's trying to s get away to somewhere safer, but in the end, Breakneck will find him and take him down. So one tier one removed for Scorbus. Um, they'll be down to a slight disadvantage. No caps probably available now to them. Generally, you'd want both tier ones in play to be able to keep that option available, but it can still happen. But I it doesn't look like school bus are going for this. They want to draw this one out. And if you're school bus looking at the map pool we have available, where do they look for their victory? Are they playing for Sand River? I think, I think um, it's really about if they have a good tactic on Sand River. I mean, City play were playing for Sand River because they had a great tactic, as uh, Rust had said, from the north and uh, from the attacking and defending. I mean, we got Ensk next. One of the maps which I think Virtus Pro could be weak on. I mean, they lost against Drew and Leprechauns, the only map they dropped in the whole season um, on Ensk. So possibly a way in there for School Bus. Then we have Cliff, also an interesting map. So honestly, looking in the map pool, Prokhorovka, Ruenberg are the two maps which are six and seven. So, you know, those are the campy maps. If these two teams wanted to camp and go to Sand River, they would have put those first. And even mines, yeah, just picked up because Arclight doesn't like mines, so why they would they pick it in one of the first four maps, which is really what it's going to be decided on. So I don't think Sam River is where these two teams want to go, but it's always an option in the back of their mind. Yeah, and they might end up going towards that eventually, but we are seeing Karit's breakneck Povel joined by the others, making a slight rotation from the east side north to west. And Chanish here in the 1390, big player throughout this season for school bus. Uh, certainly up there in the frags, to say the very least. Uh, him, Applewell, Elian, all heavy hitters across the board, top players so far. But it still looks like Verspro are happy to put a little bit of resources into possibly trying to find out more information. You said this is a very important factor, and it does look like Schoolbus will be rotating accordingly, trying to make sure they are willing and able to actually get some sort of shots across. And why is Kusok still in this position? Is he there to create the crossfire? I mean, he is maybe, yeah, probably, but he's also just too slow to, to be of any use anywhere else. If you're using the T32, you want to be hauled down 100% of the time. That's the beauty of using the T32 on the trench. It's such a great tank for that place. First kill does come down near you. Lands a fantastic shot against team captain of Virtus Pro, Karit. So at least a little bit of breathing room for school bus and maybe a way in if they do decide to exploit it. Shots do head towards near you. The firing line of Virtus Pro trying to connect some shells, but none hitting so far. Shani just gets out of there, but responds to the kill immediately on Dead Hunter. So one for one exchange. Two for one exchange, actually. Yeah, so four minutes left. Both tier ones now removed. School bus have limited vision. They are. I wouldn't say completely locked in towards that south side, but they certainly have their positions within that sort of marker as uh, near you, Applewell. And I think it will be Shanish are still there. But th there's enough cover. It's, it's very hard for Verspro to forge anything out of this. This map, uh, there's sporadic cover almost. It's very open at places and also has the, the hill slightly terrain. And obviously, 
the trenches on the other side has that option, as you're seeing the fact that Kusok is still there, as you said, in the cumbersome tank, just locking himself down, unable to really rotate at the speed the first pro can actually hit at. So let's see where Armley and our clip are willing to actually play to. They need to be careful. They don't want to overly rotate here and overly stack out that uh, slight west side of the uh, five line, but still three minutes. There's not a lot of time to work with. And it's not a lot of time, but it might just be enough time. Um, you know, I think if you look at the disparity between these two teams, maybe Virtus Pro is only five to 10% better. Yeah. Um, but that's, you know, two minute mark is that 5%, 10% is kind of, you know, washed out. It doesn't really exist anymore. But also, it's kind of mirrored on both sides. Virtus Pro is up and towards the right side. School was up and towards the back on the left side. So very similar. And, you know, at the moment, Steps is playing like we often see it played. You know, one team is kind of staying in one place, often the south team. The other team is rotating. It's trying different ways in. See if you can find a weakness. It's trying to get a few shots onto the, onto the opposition and also take down the tier ones if possible. So um, it's definitely what Versus Pro wants to be doing. It's what they expect to be doing. And um, so far, it's working out quite well because they've got two tier ones down. No damage done to themselves, of course, apart from Karitz, the team captain, going down. But it also could be a plus for them because then he can just, you know, look over the rest of his team, make sure they're doing the right thing, and doesn't have to worry about his own gameplay. Certainly many options, many things to keep in mind, as you said, and two minutes to do so. So we've seen already, Virtus Pro going from the east side to the north to the west, and then back all the way around towards the trenches. And they look like they're kind of carrying on. We generally don't see them crossing that maybe the F to G line, unless they're actually making a small play from this. It looks like the 1390s are continuing forward to an extent. They may pop themselves up on the hill and go for a couple of shots up and over, just peeking back and forwards. But will anyone be caught out? Maybe Arclit to an extent. There, there, there is some weakness to this. As we said, though, losing those tier ones, you do lose vision. And this would probably be one of the spots you'd hope School Bus would put those players in towards if they had them available. And 1 minute 21, we do see an interesting move from Virtus Pro. Is this them looking for a way in, or is it just too late? Well, they don't have to worry about losing right now, so they are looking for a way, and they've been looking for a way in for the whole match. They've been the more aggressive team. School bus obviously clearly don't like steps. Not nope. surprising. It's not an easy map to play, not an easy map to win, and they didn't obviously didn't have an option. But now Virtus Pro are surging forwards. Just cause a Vorsic break neck towards the right. Povel going for the cap, so it looks like what Virtus Pro wants to do, send all the tanks into the cap and see if they can win it like that. Wow. So far, it's not going too well to plan. Bishop takes two on the way in, but now he is there covering off Povel. 45 seconds on the cap, and well, this might work. Just Cause is moving in as well. We, we still don't really have Kusok in the battle either, so maybe he's there to stop the counterplay, but with only 34 seconds on the clock overall, we'll have to see how this one comes into effect. 19 seconds. First Pro might actually be able to turn this one around. Just Cause is taking near you low. This could work out. Let's see if they can keep this one going. Keep your eye on that timer. First reset comes in at 19 seconds. Back down to 12. They've lost down on Bishop. That means the cap is pretty much almost impossible here. Uh, 30 seconds. Maybe they can put another player in, but no, it's not looking good. Applewell's taken down one of their players. And now we are down to a time limit that's not really possible for Virtus Pro. It was a last-ditch effort, it seemed, for them. And it almost worked out. Yeah, there's some good uh, angling from School Bus. They knew that Virtus Pro would try it. that. They managed to get themselves in the right position. But it is going to be a draw. Um, to be expected, I mean, Virtus Pro might as well have done it. They didn't have anything to lose. Yep. It would have been a draw either way because of Kusok's position and the T32 far up into D7. But, you know, two draws for two, not unexpected, not entirely unexpected. Um, I think this is where things will start heating up and getting interesting. We've got himself out of the way. We've got steps out of the way. Now we're seeing Ents, we're seeing Cliff, we're seeing Mines. The more dynamic maps and the maps which we often see innovation on. I mean, Virtus Pro have played so, so well on Ensk, but only just to lose to Druiding Leprechauns kind of did disparage that whole um, that whole notion that they are unbeatable on that map. So we're gonna have to see how that one works out for them. Of course, you know, School Bus have also been pretty consistent throughout the tournament, 66% winning ratio on Ensk, not too bad from them at all, but also a map they could innovate on. Many options available to School Bus here. We've not really seen them actually bringing out much of a game style. They've been responsive on Himmelsdorf. They've been passive on steps. We haven't seen them making their own plays yet. And this is what kind of worries me. If you get in that mindset, we're just playing passive the whole time. It may not work out too well for them. I'm hoping they can still forge 
themselves to move forward. If you go into Sand River after four draws where you've been passive, you're not that warmed up. You've not been making the plays. You've not been really working on that synergy, the team play, making sure your aim's on point. And we heard in the first day that, you know, hands were shaking on the first games. Oh, clear. The man on your screen right now telling Mitch that just before or just after their first win. And, you know, grand finals, it's, it's a lot of money on the line. Uh, what, $25,000 difference, basically, in these choices. And you don't want to leave it down to that sort of map if you can. If you can help it, you want to make sure it happens prior. First Pro looking solid. They're looking calm. They're looking ready. And let's bear in mind, they could pick up $50,000 within just two games. Yeah, that's exactly what everyone's playing for. I mean... It is a money for Virtus Pro. They are a professional team, as uh, Carmen quite rightly pointed out. You know, they are really the only team that lives from this. They're like Na'Vi. Some of them do this as their full-time job, and it's really important for them to win that money. I mean, they won a hell of a lot of money at the Grand Finals. They won Season 3, they won Season 2. They do well in the online phases, and, um, you know, it's, they do start picking up the cash when they, when they go through like this. And, of course, you know, a $50,000 paycheck for them would be very tasty. Um, and they definitely don't want to lose it. But as the school bus, they, they want to be winning this. For them already, second place is very good, considering they didn't do too well. Um, in the online stages, definitely struggled through. And to be honest, TCM were better than them. Kaza Crew, debatably better than them. So they're very, not lucky, but very fortunate to be here in the first place. Yeah, we'll have to see how this comes through now. But we said there might be a, a victor on in some form, as you mentioned, uh, Verse Pro showing a slight chink of weakness when they played up against the Jordan Leprechauns. I'd love to get um, the Finn's opinion on that. Let's uh, you can always ask him about that one, see what he what he thought was the weakness there. And I'm sure in the analysis it'll be brought up, so I'd like to make sure Wilkie does uh, take a step-by-step -step through, you know, the uh, Ensk play if necessary. But we'll have to see if it even becomes a map to, you know, go for the win on. It can be polarizing. We've seen the green side utilized extraordinarily more uh, in this just gone season than the priors. We, we near or never saw it in uh, season three and two. It was such a rarity. But now in season four, it's become near on a staple play and it's it's a little rare to see both teams going in for the city or maybe the railroad push, which uh, did come through a hell of a lot more. Na'Vi near on, not, ch not necessarily champion it, but certainly uh, making a viable, brilliant option to go for. So Ensk does have a lot of versatility and variety to it these days, especially for an arguable hybrid map to an extent. Now, do these both teams favor that uh, the green side or do they still toe the idea of the kind of railroad push and the city area? Well, Vertus Pro was the team to really like do that foot first push into the city. They went very, they go very aggressive. They push out, they try and take the IS3s that are alone. Um, but you know, this is a, a sorry map for them for sure. If you hark back all the way to season one, they lost the whole season on this map to School Bus. Um, thanks to Arkley, actually, who absorbed like 4,000 damage in the Zyas 3. So this could actually be a painful reminder to them that they aren't, you know, invincible. School Bus can beat them, and they will beat them if they make even the tiniest of mistakes. It's going to be very interesting. Um, personally, I think we're going to see some innovation. I don't think we're going to see anyone... Don't think, don't think we'll see a draw... ...unless one of them makes a cataclysmic mistake at the beginning. But just like the previous map, they're going right. Ooh. And, well, the damage could be done very early on if the northern side of School Bus actually go for the cross shots. I don't think they are, though, so... Oh, wow. A little wow. Bit of miscommunication there. That's not a good start there for Verse Pro. It's already taking a little bit of damage. And it's more the mental impact of doing things like that, of making those miscommunicated calls and just that little bit of... Maybe not necessarily frustration, but just the pressure is getting there and the small errors will come into play. But still, the negative cross fairly unscathed. And Schoolbus didn't go for the initial shots either. So Evil Panel Squad, uh, <coughs> Evil Panel Squad, Schoolbus had an interesting decision there. They were like, okay, so Verse Pro probably are going towards the green zone. We can get them on the cross like EPS did um, and do a lot of damage. But having said that, it's also a risky move because as you saw, once EPS were over towards the left side, they don't have such an easy time of pushing forwards and being aggressive. Whereas when you're playing in the city, you do. Um, also, mm. the Vickers being used again, the, the Vickers Medium Mark 1, does give an indication straight away that School Bus actually want to go for the cap later on. So I'd expect School Bus to run that timer down as much as possible, put the, the Tier 1 in towards the cap, sit their other Tier 1, the smaller one, behind, and actually try and go for that as quickly as possible and use the pressure from their combat tanks, the IS-3s and the Air 5100s to stave off Virtus Pro from mm. resetting. 
And Povel and Vorsic are going, not necessarily aggressive, but they've certainly gained ground and confidence in their play towards that east side of the map, sending a bit of a 2-2 two -two squad, leaving one man back a little further as well. But what was, what was the purpose here of those two players towards the northeast side? Are they just trying to get the shots on towards maybe where Skubas are or just to gain ground? To gain ground and also that they're, they're actually, you can't see it here, but they're actually on kind of like a slope. They're on a hill. Yeah. They can get the higher ground, they can shoot down, they can take out buildings, they can maybe hit a couple of interesting shots, make some blind fire altogether. So that's probably why Vorstix is up there. Povel towards left just to make he's, to make sure that he's supported. And Verse Pro just testing the water. They're going forwards. Yeah. They're looking for a weakness. If they find one, then they'll exploit it straight away. Ensign's a very small map, 600 meters by 600 meters. The smallest map in the whole map pool, um, which does lead you to the fact that actually running away and drawing, unless you're power slide, is extremely, extremely hard. So if you do push in, you need to commit 100%. You need to get it right, because there will be no second chances. And, and I'm looking at the way school bus are playing. I, I don't see them going for the wins in these maps at all. I see really passive school bus, which is kind of weird. Uh, looking back at history, I, I look back to how Virtus Pro were probably the more passive team back in the day. Um, renowned for their really lockdown strategies where they very rarely probe. They seem to change a little around, I, it must have been season three, I think, I started to see that more you know, commitment to their execution, but they were very drilled in. You could argue they were fairly dull, but it made them win kind of strategy of play. But they've they changed a little during the online phase. They added slight aggression into it. They added execution into it. And they came out substantially better, but now it looks like a bit of a role reversal. Uh, School Bus are the ones being quite passive, quite drilled in, very much waiting for the move to happen towards them. And first Pro are the ones forcing them to move. And I look back to maybe, I think it was either the season three finals. I think it was uh, in Poland. And I remember speaking to Stalker about the game that they had against Virtus Pro there. And they said that if we'd played more passive, we would would have actually walked away with a win. Mm -hmm. And they, and we know Stalker's very opinionated. Yep. He is, he's the man who will believe anything, to say the least. It's worse than Carmen. Ooh, I don't know about that. <laughs> no, we love Carmen. But still, it's, that was what he said. And I kind of agreed. School Bus always made the first plays when they met together in season mm -hmm. three. And then responsive play came from Verse Pro and they won. If, it feels like School Bus are kind of saying, okay, well, you did this to us. We're going to see if you can actually do any better. It, it may not be the exact reason they're playing like this. Tactics come into play as well, but mentally, surely that's got to be haunting them a little bit from those prior season finals where they've lost out to this team. It's going to be on both sides like that. They've lost against each other plenty of times before. Actually, the only time Virtus Pro have really, um, you know, been tested actually in this season at least is is it when they they fought against each other. It was a it was a really big stomp though. One draw and three wins for Virtus Pro against School Bus mm. on the online stage. So, so far, I mean, doesn't look good for School Bus. Clearly, School Bus has an extraordinary tactic. They have something they want to try. They don't know anything. They don't want to try anything they got planned on ends. They don't try anything on the plan on steps. They don't try anything they planned on, on Himmelsdorf. We got mines next. Maybe they got something for that. Crete gets taken down by Arklet. So, at least the tier one goes towards School Bus. Maybe that'll open something up for them. And they'll try something. But as I said before, it's really going to be a, a, a game of attrition. Who gives in first? Who goes for it first? And if School Bus does it, with the extraordinary tech they have on one of the next coming up, upcoming maps, they're risking everything, but if they have a good tactic, they're the world winning. will be great. Exactly, they'll be winning it. A lot of question marks around who's, who, it is literally a game of who's gonna make that first real move. As you said, it can either go so well, or it can go so badly. And you know, you may say, audience may not appreciate the gravity of this, but $25,000 difference in just one tactic. You've got to see the bigger picture in this. These guys can't just go, hey, let's just charge in and hope that we connect all our shells, that we don't bounce one, that one player doesn't maybe get the whole picture and makes an error. Every single factor has to be in place. And these teams don't just have strategies on one map. They have strategy from start to finish. You were talking to Seaplay, and even they said, we were playing to do the damage on that second map. We were playing because we thought we might have to go to Sand River. Mm -hmm. We were playing that game style. They ended up picking it up on Mines route anyway. But it was how they, they looked at the game. They don't just look at one map. It's not just, oh, we'll just camp. It's, OK, how does this feed into the best of five style? How does this feed into the best of seven style? Can we now forge a victory on our better maps? Can we make the other team almost negate their favorites here? Can we forge that from our game style? Yes or no? And this is the bigger play. 
you can get too tunnel vision sometimes and only see that small aspect of what's happening in front of you. And that's the difference between your average player who just sees, oh, okay, they're just being passive, and the better teams to see, okay, well, this is just not their very, you know, strongest map, or they feel it even evenly matched on, or they feel that there's a better map to forge that win on in a better position. Because if you pick up the first map, there's still opportunities to turn it around. If you pick up in the third, you automatically win. So there's, there's this harder kind of element that comes into play when you are in that best of five style. Obviously, we're in best of seven, but still. There's so many different elements that come into this factor that you have to keep in mind. This is map number three. First two have been fairly drawn out. Himmelsdorf, there was an exchange that Verspro did go for the aggression on, and it just didn't work for them. They, they had a one questionable lack of push, one questionable lack of commitment there. And Scorba said, okay, well, that's fine. We'll, we'll actually take the draw then. No worries to that. We'll happily take you up on that offer. Second map, very passive from both mm -hmm. sides. First Pro were still probing. But on this one, it seems very even in the kind of understanding of actually we don't want to go for that aggression here. This is not a map we feel that confident on. So now another few maps to go. Obviously, as you said, nothing's going to happen on Ensk. Which is, um, although I said I didn't think it would be quite this slow, I didn't really think there would be a win on it. Um, <laughs> Just hope there would be a win on it. Yeah, we pray. We yeah, exactly. It was it was um <laughs> It was it was a silly pipe dream. Yeah, it was it was a dream I had. <laughs> Once upon a time. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Where's Mitch with that lemon? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should exchange with orange or something. I don't know, man. That, that's I think not he, as, I think as that shocking. He prefers orange to lemon. I think no, lemon was his favourite fruit, I think we discovered. Like it's just a bad favourite fruit. To it's have. not like, cool. Most people it's like not apple. like sweet or something. Mine's definitely mine. Yeah. Oh, you like mangoes? Yeah. Oh, man, that's pretty Freeze-dried awesome. mangoes are the bomb. Yeah. See, producers trying to be nice and like, hey, hey, get back to content. No, we're talking about lemons right now, producer. It's amazing <laughs> how quick we transition from game to food. We try. We try for so long, and then it just kind of crumbles. <laughs> <laughs> a bit like a good... Uh, Apple crumble? Yeah, or... Uh, what is it called? Shortbread. Oh, shortbread. That's you haven't had I that haven't in ages, ages man. It's so I'll good. bring some in uh, on Tuesday. I'll bring some into the office. Do they have it in Germany? Ah, uh, the English shop. Oh, okay. I'll pop down there and get some. We'll have a cup of tea. Yeah. We'll chill out. Play some Ensk. Dink some... Uh, would, you, would you dink the shortbread? Would, would it be a dinkable I, biscuit? It mm. might be a bit too crumbly. It might end up exactly. at the bottom of and your... And that is a disaster oh, for that's, any English person that's, out there. That's going to be bad. You ruin your tea and you ruin your, your, your bicky. It's terrible. Like yeah, a good, bad. good dinking bicky. Ooh, probably. Digestive. Digestives are good. All the ones with the chocolate. Rich on tea, it. rich tea are okay as well. Yeah, they yeah. go a little bit soggy if you're too long. Yeah, gotta be careful. The short thing, just like half a second. Yeah, you've got to time in, it. In and out. This, this is like an English discussion, <laughs> really, isn't it? I'm sorry out there, anyone who's not English and enjoys dinking bickies, but there is an art to it. We assure you. Yeah. But still, 30 seconds left in this one. We've seen one tier one go down, and yeah. Applewow take one shot. So you can imagine why we're currently discussing tea. So do not fear. 20 seconds on the board. And we'll be moving on to the next map. We can start looking at, uh, at discussing the next map because this, no surprise, is going to be a draw. So we can start discussing the one and only Cliff. Now, a map that I'd say on paper versus Pro been a little stronger on. But would you tend to think they can pick up a victory on that? Um, I think, I think um, it's more possible than Ensk. Yeah. You know, Ensk is a pretty interesting map. But we've seen in the finals time and time again, and it's been drawn and drawn out. I mean, you can hark back to the to season finals of the Russian League, and it was like 11 draws on one map. So season two or something. Ouch. Wasn't good. Um, Cliff next. We've seen a lot of wins on it. We so have. Surprisingly, I mean, because we also it has see been wins changed. on Himmelsdorf as well. Exactly. We've seen wins on Himmelsdorf. We've seen wins on on Cliff, but to be honest, I would say Cliff is a lot more likely to be aggressive than anything else. Okay, so I think we need to break down those first three maps and maybe the analysis test can kind of go through why they feel it's actually turned out the way it has because there were options of pushes, there were glimpses of aggression, but they kind of didn't go for it. So guys on the desk, break it down for us. I think it's pretty obvious what's going on here. It's these guys are playing classic tanks. I like to call it classic tanks because in the first few seasons, uh, Russian League was the first league, and this is basically the fullback for offline tournaments. If you don't think you're confident enough to do things. Now, I think Virtus Pro lost their confidence from messing up Himmelsdorf. So, so this one, take us through Himmelsdorf. Himmelsdorf, they had a good strategy. They zoned the hill, they forced... Uh, 
school bus to retreat to the corner and then they had them where they wanted to have them, like on the grand finals against Navi. They had them in the corner, then they executed the attack. They actually also evolved this attack. They used the T1 as a shield for the IS-3, so he should catch less damage, which it also did. They shot the T1, but it was a bit a mistake. He took too much damage. So he used the T1 a bit wrong, but it was still a great idea. And they took an advantage. Then they positioned themselves in the cap so they cannot get T cap from the one position. But they forgot the other one can relocate from up there, which he did, and reset it from there. So the positioning in the cap was a crucial mistake at that point. But yeah. they, when they uh, started the attack, it was beautiful. It did seem good at, um, at the start. So we'll go through the start right now with the replay. As we see, they do break into the cap. They know exactly where there is. I think the, the weak link here, though, is just cause. He actually fails his mission. Uh, trying to keep the flank secure. The actual execution into the cap zone went well, but it didn't go so well with the um, flanking maneuver. As you said, eventually the, the flank collapsed and they were able to come back around. So that was your point. The point is Apple Wow is behind and he goes all the way back and shoots from the other side to decap. And that they didn't even think about. The IS-3 stayed on a position where he can get decap, the 5100. Didn't. Like, the 5100 thought about that, went safe, but they didn't tell the IS-3. So the IS-3 stayed on the open and was decapped, and that lost in the game. I yes. actually have the right in here. Right here. Okay, we're going well, to show, show it to the camera. This is, this is how you want to explain it. To If we get the camera to zoom in on this, you actually want to take us through this. So, so pretty okay. much uh, school bus tanks were shooting from here, from the tree line. Apple one came from here, from the fifth line, and there was an IS-3 on this corner. Actually, it's a bit further away there. But this IS-3 was right here in the open, right here. So Apple was able to reset him. But if the IS-3 would have been here, with the 1500s being here, the Apple Valve couldn't have reset the IS-3 at all. And this guy only job is to block these guys. So this IS-3 would have the side scrape against those guys, and Apple One wouldn't well, that, have anything to do. That makes sense. So let's have a look at the replay now, the actual in-game replay, and see what actually happened. I think they were scared of the T1 at the back, and that was the problem. That's why they were so far forward. As Apple comes around the side there, you see how their position was, but the T1 was scaring them. And that's why they were, as you said, out, out of position, or not in the best position. Uh, I think that's the best way you want to describe it. He comes in and, and it, everything falls apart for them. That was actually the worst I've ever seen them execute this, uh, which makes me feel that they are nervous or something. Because in the grand finals, they did a lot better. We and have to remember the stakes are so high. They are playing for a lot of money. So maybe they are a bit shaky. Maybe, but they were playing for more in the grand finals. So this yeah. is why it's like they were really confident going into that. But here they don't seem to have the confidence. Also, they are afraid of Diver. He told them, you know, he took their passports. He took their, you know, phones. <laughs> He's saying that if they don't win, he'll do, you know, toss in the run. So I don't, I don't know why <laughs> these guys are doing that scary. But in grand finals, they were underdogs compared to Navi. Here they True. are the top dogs. That is actually a big mentality difference. If you're the top dog, you don't want to be knocked off of that. But when you're the underdog, it's no pressure at all. I believe there was an interview with uh, some of the guy, I think Inspirer or someone from Navi, as they said that. It's so much easier being the underdog. Yeah. You just attack and you don't care. I think we look at C-Play and they're, they, no one expected anything from them. So they just went for it and also, it was so good. Cool. Also, you have to remember that C-Play already showed that they can lose the maps. That's one. Second, all the time, Diver and other guys from Virtus Pro were saying that school bus without Stalker is not that, you know, no longer that um, that big, big firm. Also, they took one of the players, so from from a school bus. So it's not easy for them, you know, to lose against them. This means, you know, also the team from really low plays in the league comes there here, fights first day, wins it, wins with EPS, and then crashes Virtus Pro. I was waiting for that and waiting for that. Well, yeah, you did actually, the only one who said it would definitely go to Sam River. I was actually secretly knowing it would go to Sam River, but didn't want to, I didn't want to jinx it. I wanted to say, no, it will not go there. But everyone needs to we know. We have clips. 
Sorry? We have steel cliffs, so cliffs maybe. The yes, there. exactly. I was about to say that. I was okay, actually sorry, about to friend. say <laughs> we have one more game, which will be cliffs, to decide whether it will go to Sand River or not. And it hasn't gone to Sand River yet. So, and cliffs is a really hard map to draw. Like, I have seen it being drawn a few times, but uh, it's it's often not with, late. Not with Russian style that you are mentioning <laughs> about, you know, Grant, uh, about the finals of the other seasons of Russian League that they were so campy. With this season, they cannot do it the same, but they still can camp and go to go to Sand River. So Cliffs, in my opinion, is a weak map from guys from Virtus Pro. If in the Sand River, uh, in Cliff, we are gonna have a big fight in the middle, then that will be the decider. But if the other team goes from the low ground and the other to the high, then it's gonna be the Sand River. Maybe we will find out right now, though, as I think they're ready to go into battle. So back over to your casters, Pansy and Laughter. Thank you so much, guys, and thank you for breaking down those last couple of maps. Some very good points raised. And we are getting ready for that final, possibly deciding map between these two. It could go to Sand River, or we will see a winner. Simple as that. And it's going to be on Cliff of all maps. It's a hard one to play, and these two teams coming to the season originally were the two who probably knew it the best. Who has the edge? As um, Carmen said, I actually don't think Virtus Pro is particularly strong, Cliff. So school bus. If they don't want to go to Sand River, this is the point where they have to not let them go to Sand yeah. River, basically. This is their weakest map in the whole map pool. Yeah, okay, Dream Leprechaun's one ends, but it's more of a fail from Verse Pro than anything. So it's going to be really interesting. School Bus can exploit that weakness, as, as um, of course, uh, Verse Pro tried to exploit the weakness of School, of school Bus on Himmelsdorf. Then it could be a possible win. But first Pro probably trained this very hard. They knew they're weak on it. And they may have just come another 5 to 10% stronger and just closed up the weakness at all. Of course, it's 9.2, so the map has been changed. It's been more uh, balanced towards the north. And it could also be a big factor. But Virtus Pro heading up into the middle, and that's his school bus. So this could be the engagement in the middle, which, which uh, Wilkie was talking about. And what tanks are we seeing here? Are they going for a lineup that could actually um, kind of complement that? Is there an advantage on either side, do you feel, or is this quite even? Well, uh, T69 from Bishop is probably going to give School Bus a little bit of advantage. It's going to be aggression. They're going straight in. School Bus are in blue. Verse Pro and Red, and the game is going to be well underway here. And look at Vorsic straight away taken low, as has Arpit, however. So a fairly even exchange to this point. Bishop takes a little bit. Armley as well. It's back and forth action. Armley overextends by a touch. Taken down. First kill comes in for Verse Pro. Just cause punishes. And remember, if they win this map, they win overall. It's possibly down to $25,000 with one decision on this map coming up. That was awful play by Armley, overextending. I have no idea what he's doing there. Maybe he thought he could get a couple more shots on, but that was completely unnecessary, and that's given Virtus Pro a massive advantage here. All they have to do is play it correctly, play it through, not allow School Boss to do any more damage, not allow School Boss to get in a better position, and more damage just head the way of Virtus Pro. Breakneck this time being on the end of that one. 240 damage or so, and now, what can Virtus prove? What can School Bus do to try and alleviate this? Well, Breakneck's in a great position. One shell did connect towards Applewell. He tries to back away. Breakneck lines up another, not going to be able to connect. Applewell playing smart now. Towards the foot of the cliff they go. They do not want to overextend. They should have learned exactly what went from Armory. But still, gun in the game aspect is still very much in favor to Virtus Pro, even though the HP is fairly low. You look at Bishop, you look at Vorsic, but still, the 3090s, the three who are up, have got good amounts of HP left. Where are these guys heading? What are their options now for School Bus? I think School Bus may be just trying to play for time a little bit more. And uh, Vorsic's got a fantastic position onto near you. And he's going to take a couple of shells. Only one actually connects, though. More damage heads towards Breaknet now. 363. That's a two shot for an AMX 3090. Where's and honestly, School Bus has done a lot more damage than Virtus Pro, but Armley having gone down is not good. Arklet's going to be heading around, I do believe. And he's he's gone top. in the hill. That's perfect position for Arklet there. This is stunning stuff. We've got Shanish and Arklet creating this lovely crossfire across the map. Any Verse Pro player that may push for it could be in trouble, but look at Kusok on the hunt. He's going to be trying to head up there and challenge Arklet for this one. Taking that hill dominance is vital now. I'm not sure if Arklet knows this. Let's find out if he can get Definitely that initial shot it. off. I think he does. The turret is turned and waiting. Kusok could walk into a bit of damage here. It would equal it up on HP between the two. And there we go. First shell does come from Arklet. Connects. Near you receives one, however, so that's not ideal. And now Arklet 
takes one as well. Niyu is down to a one-shot, as is Arklit. This could fall apart. They need to pull this together. The bounce comes in. Arklit's life may have been saved for another second, but Shanish needs to get in this battle. He needs to be laying down these shots, and he's done just that. Karitz goes. Only a tier one, but everything counts right now. He's going to take a shell back. Is that a worthwhile trade? It's a pretty good trade for them. I mean, Breakneck needs to stay safe. First Pro have great coordination now. They're not dying. They're keeping their tanks alive. Bishop Force, they got the most HP. They need to be going for forward. Goal, but Kusok goes down. Big blow there for Virtus Pro. That is going to make all the odds. Arklet now has more freedom. He can once again support from that upper position slightly more carefully, but still, him and Shanish have done so much work. Now they're committing just cause like lambs to the slaughter. Virtus Pro might fail in this one, but let's see if they can turn this one again. Can near you do the job? Bishop backs away. It looks like Virtus Pro have learned this lesson. They're having none of this now. It's a little too close for comfort, but just cause continues up. Does he know Arklet's still here? Has Arklet backed off? Has he fully gone off this hill? Just Cause is hunting. He's surely going to know there's someone around here. Will Arklet crest that hill and go for the shot? Breakneck still in position. Watching Shanish. Borsik as well. Tentative stuff now. Arklet's a one shot, as is near you. Breakneck's low. It's quite even overall for HP. One more couple of shells coming in. Nice Ooh, work from Al. Well, in Vorsic trouble. is low. He goes down. Shanish claims it. This is going school bus's way. They need to make sure they finish this. So Bishop is still dangerous, as is Just Cause. And you can never write out Breakneck in this. Can they really close this down now, school bus? They're on the verge here. Too much confidence might actually be the downfall of school bus here. Arklet shouldn't peek around because Breakneck and, Shani, uh, Breakneck and Just Cause can hit him. And Just Cause is a fantastic play. He won't be able to miss that shot. So Arklet's got to stay patient. Dark God Sim's got to go forward. Spot. Make sure that Just Cause is in the right oh position. God, he's going the for 50 it. meter proxy squad between these two means they're both spotted. And Just Cause can't give away the hill because if he does, Arklet can make some good shots onto Bishop and Pavel. Can Shanish land any on the way down as well? I think he moved from position. Arklet once again cresting up and over. This is still a dangerous 1v1 on that hill. Breakneck has adjusted. As you said, he can shoot down Arklet. Just Cause needs to drag him in. Make that ego play happen. Make Arklet peep. But where are now Virtus Pro going? News on the move. They're going to try and close this one down. Will they go into a Virtus Pro trap, though? I'm not sure what near you wants to do, but Shanish is staying in the same position. A lot of resources for school bus heading south. Going to be going up in towards the middle, maybe looking for the cross. Because Just Cause has to stay on the hill to, str to stay Ar um, Arklet off, basically what they can do is shoot him from behind and still keep the hill dominance. And uh, really, that one tank in favor of School Bus really makes it hard for Virtus Pro to maneuver, and they're definitely going to be wanting to go for the draw. Pavel in a good position, though, to spot Apwell near you and Dead Hunter. So it's going to be interesting who can actually do that. Bishop also in a perfect position to deal with this push from School Bus. Four minutes and four seconds left. This is risky play from both teams, but especially from School Bus. They, cause it's really going to be do or die for this team. Well, Bishop must land this shot. If he wants to get this one under control, make sure he denies. Misses the first. Applewell gets through. Misses the second. Bishop, this is not normal play from this man. He lands shells like it's going out of fashion. But right now, the pressure might be getting a little bit too much as Just Cause still in that arduous battle with Arklet. As Breakneck must keep in mind now, there's players coming towards the camp. There's still Arklet on that hill. We're still spreading our attention here. And as you can see, near you, getting closer and closer. Shells coming in, unconnecting. Three minutes and 24 seconds. Teams trying to find that final push, that final execution. Arklet backing away a little now as Wapua lets a shot, doesn't connect towards Bishop either. And if School Bus let this slip, this would be a disaster for them. But Bishop gets found. Does get one shot coming in. Not sure who that came from. Might have been Shanish, possibly. Might, near you, probably. Might have been near you. Both uh, 3090s could have landed that one. As now we see Dark Gods him taking the place of Arklet up there. As you said, it was the option they should go for. Uh, Dark Gods him is just trying to keep uh, Just Cause in that position. He wants to know what to do. Apwell made a good shot on to... Um, Bishop there, so at least a good exchange there for School Bus. Now, Apple with the most HP and also the best player for School Bus heading around, going to be trying to get just cause as he does head off the hill. He, can he launch, uh, land the shells? That's the real question. Pavel might be able to spot him, but probably not. Just cause does take down Zim, though. That's a tier one dispatched. And that'll mean Arklet will have to stay on that hill. As Breaknet finds Dead Hunter, second tier one, going down for School Bus. And really, those two tier ones could have made a big difference in terms of the capping pressure. Well, four v three, pretty much. Pavel is alive. He is there for the draw. Nothing else right now. He's going to try and hide this out as much as possible. 
Everyone else knows where Just Cause is. They've got a rough idea where Breakneck is. Bishop, maybe not so much. Two minutes now for School Bus to find them and execute. They put Shanish up here with slightly more HP, rather than the likes of Arklet, who was there prior. Doesn't get the first shot connecting. These guys are going to try and make sure no one else lands these shots. But they must make this count. Shanish still looking to take Just Cause off this hill. The push will happen very shortly from Shanish. He's crested. He's going to take control. But still, 1 minute and 38. They're leaving this close here. I think it's just cause didn't have enough HP there to deal with Shanish. It would have been one shot which he could have got off more than Shanish and more than just cause. So good play there from just. But also losing the hill a bit disastrous. One minute and 25 seconds because can school bus make this happen? I mean, it's not really a huge advantage losing oh, one tank, but Applewell, perfect position to take just cause. I think they're going to try and pincer him. But what, what can Breakneck do on the left side? to counter this. He's going to have to do something incredible because Just Cause has now seconds to live. One minute on the board. Cautious play has paid off so far, but can School Bus actually close this out? He's still there. He's still got 448 HP. Near you finds Bishop. Three tanks now to go. First shot from Applewell comes in. Can they land anymore? Misses the second, however. Shanish comes into the action. Misses as well. This is going oh, questionably, but Shanish does find Just Cause. Now Breakneck and Povel, the last two alive. They have to stave off the walls for 44 seconds. And look at this play coming out from Povel. He's making a bit of a play down towards that west side. And if they don't predict this, this could be dire. We've got a split from near you. He has to find him. 33 seconds. Breakneck moving out position. Applewell spots him. Doesn't land the shell. Breakneck finds Applewell. Gets one into the bag. But Applewell takes him down. 26 seconds. It's all on to Povel. 1v4. He can't get the kills. But he has to stay alive for 20 seconds here. And near you is steps away. I think he knows it. Surely he's going to spot him out. Oh, yes, he he's is. Yes, he is. Nerve. He's spotted. He's over. going. Niu knows it. He's going to land the shell and score bus take down Virtus Pro with what? seven seconds remaining. Score bus have done it. Look how what much that means happened. to them. <laughs> Scenes of pure elation from School Bus. New player near you, so happy. Star Applewow dancing on the stage. And what can I say? An amazing play from amazing players. They saw the weakness on Cliff. They saw Virtus Pro. They saw that they bled real blood and they took, it, took them down. Just fantastic stuff. The Titans have fallen once again second second place for Virtus Pro in two offline events and the team that everyone questions school bus they lost out on their captain they removed stalker they made a bold and brave move to do that and look what it's done for them they've turned this around from a dire past after a questionable start in the online phases to win it in the end that's something that they can take home and be proud of for a long time to come so congratulations school bus you have fought so damn hard through this whole tournament and you've had shaky performances let's be honest here they look dangerously close to losing out earlier on they had the likes of kasner in their way tcm all these teams who could have possibly toppled them they've had some hard games but they've somehow fought through to the very end yeah i mean they fought tcm first and to be honest everyone was like hey tcm were the better team they should have won that and then they fought kasner and they were like hey everyone School bus weren't that good there. Kasner yep. should have won that. They really came from the, from behind to go forwards and to win it. But then again, you know, I think School Bus as a team was training a lot against what Virtus Pro was going to do as opposed to what TCM was yep. going to do. They probably trained Kasner crew. That's why they looked a little bit stronger against them. But altogether, they were looking at the top dogs at Virtus Pro, the unbeatable team in the online stage of the season, as the people to take down. Mm. And one other thing I want to mention, what lost it for them was Vorsik. You can't ignore him, but let's have a quick reminder from the first day, the route the school bus took to those finals. They started out up against TCM, a hard opponent, no matter what way you look at it, a 3-2 result, not exactly a clear cut uh, factor towards it. And then following that, Kasner, one of the stronger tip teams to come into this, to make it into the top two, they took them down and then went through to the second day. And today they have been focused, they've been ready and they executed damn well. Evil Panda Squad got shaken to their core by mm -hmm. that first game, and that completely put Evil Panda Squad on tilt for the whole tournament. They went out in a blink of an eye. And, well, School Bus just went through absolutely phenomenally. So congratulations, School Bus. I think we need to head down on towards that main stage and check out how it really feels down there.
Wow. I think everyone in this place, the, the, I think the cheer that we heard at the end of that game literally shook the foundations of this building. What an incredible match. And of course, Eichlid, you've been smiling all weekend, mate, uh, and you're definitely still smiling now. Tell me that we, we, we saw some draws. We expected to see, you know, some careful play from both teams. But the Cliff game, actually, there were a few hiccups there for you guys. Um, I, I want to know what your plan was because I knew some things may not have gone to play. I saw you actually slid off the hill at one point by accident. When you are, yeah. yeah. So tell me, what was, how did you sort of bring that from, you know, a bit of a stalemate uh, in, to a winning game for you? Well, uh, we knew that uh, after the second battle, after the second draw, we knew that uh, Virtus Pro is playing it safe. So uh, we expected them to make their move on the last map because it's a winning match and nobody wants to play the Sand River because it's a bit random. So, uh, we decided to be faster in that one. We decided that we have to do it, uh, that we have to be decisive and we have to take it. So we were play, playing uh, aggressive, but aggressive enough to uh, not give our HP for free, because we knew if, if, if it will be another draw, we are going to take it uh, on the Sand River. Well, fantastic. Look, it's been such a journey for you guys, you know, the, the way the team's changed and. Uh, you know, the way your season sort of worked, of course, you worked Dignitas and, you know, you had uh, near you now coming into the team as well. Just uh, tell you, did you guys really expect this to happen? What does it mean to you guys to be standing here right now as our season four champions? It's, uh, it's the greatest uh, event for us and we, and winning it means a lot uh, to a team because uh, we know now that we are uh, one team uh, as a whole, nobody uh, gets uh, beaten up for failing the games and everything. We have uh, great respect for our uh, competitive teams. They showed us our weaknesses, they helped us to improve, they helped us uh, to get to this place and uh, especially to Virtus Pro, who were really uh, the first team for this uh, whole event and uh, winning them is just is just crazy and look no one can take anything away from you guys the way you played that last map was just just fantastic you guys really really deserve it ladies and gentlemen i want to present to you one last time our season four champion school bus yeah. well fantastic i mean look uh, you know, you guys have been fantastic all weekend. You really wear your hearts on your sleeves, even if you have to draw it on. You know, you guys have been smiling, and it's just fantastic to see, uh, you know, you guys get what you were after. So thank you so much to you guys, and thank you so much to you guys on the stream as well. Thank you for being involved in the voting for the Razor MVP. Thank you to Razor as well for powering this and our MVPs. And, of course, massive shout out, uh, massive shout out to Melly, and of course, Oliver and Pansy on the desk. And, of course, our analysts as well. Fantastic job over the weekend. And thank you very much to you guys for joining us here in Cologne. What a fantastic audience you have been. Well, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, it saddens me to have to do this, but it is time to start to pack it down and close. So thank you so much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. And until next time, we'll see you on the battlefield.